Hey, man, we were talking about something. Yeah, I was so glad that you brought that up. Yes, I, yes, I, yes, in my yes. clinics, I'm doing, I says, you know, we're putting too much emphasis on this hand pad work. I mean, the great fighters, they, they, when you really look at really great trainers, forget this modern day stuff, stuff. It's, it was not necessarily all about, they didn't even use pads. And now it's got to be a, you can make a lot of noise and put on a great show with do someone hitting on your hands with the pads, you're considered a trainer. Right, right. right. And now it's too much emphasis has been put on that. I think uh, you need to sit back and teach. And that's what the old, I call the great trainers I know, none of them ever use pads. Yeah, it was, it, it was interesting because after watching the telecast, and, and I've thought about it for a long time, I said, wait a second, as a kid growing up, I mean, I watched one of my favorite fighters, um, Larry Holmes, uh, uh, Ali, Joe Frazier, uh, you know, Benitez, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, those are the guys I kind of grew up watching as a kid, and I never saw that. I never saw what we see with Floyd Mayweather, or we see a lot of what we see today with the fancy uh, pad work. I was the first person that really <laughs> developed the, the pad work to make it famous. When you ever you saw Thomas Harris training, you saw me working the pads. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing Ray doing the pads. Mm -hmm. Larry Holmes, and definitely Ray Robinsons. And when I first started using the pads, when I started training boxers, which was in 61, I used to take a pair of regular boxing gloves and just reverse them yeah, for the yeah. pad aside. And that's what I used. <laughs> and now they were the last 20 some years, they created really pads for that. But I used to use that just turning the gloves around because it was, to me, something that helped me develop the proper balance and everything. But it's changed now where it's more of a form of just like beating a speed bag type. There's no power, the punches are not even realistic. Uh, you guys can actually pretty much, as we say, do some pad work and carry on a full conversation or watch a television show because right. it's just a little way of, but it's got to be what the standard that in the industry now, a boxer says, oh, he's a good trainer because he can do good pad work and right, put on right. a good show. And that's all that they put the emphasis on, which is, to me, is stupid. Uh, you don't have to do pads in period to make a trainer. Sometimes be able to show someone basically what they're doing wrong or right. Uh, then between rounds, you can have a conversation, demonstrate, show them something else. That is, for me, a better form of training than this just showmanship of hitting on the pads. I don't know because they don't even let the punches go through. The punches are meant halfway, but the trainer slap in the hand before it gets maybe halfway to the target. And therefore, the fighters today don't punch all the way through. That's why we have very little knockouts, very fast hands, great showmanship, but very few knockouts, as in the day of Hearns and Hagler and Duran. Right, right, and then right, right, right. when the fighters really punch through the target and not to just make a, a noise and put on the show. So uh, the pad work is overly, overly exaggerated. What gave you the... What, how did that come up? How do you think of, of something like, like using pads? What was your reason for it? Well, when I was coming up, I would like to actually have a boxer feel a punch coming from the position and the stance of another opponent. And, uh, and that's where, and even when I do pad work, if I'm training a boxer to fight a southpaw, I would actually stand in a position as if I'm a southpaw. And I want him to get comfortable of that position. And that's where I would do that. And, and I threw pad work, you'll never hardly see a boxer throw over four punches on a pass you know, five because to get full power, you cannot throw a nine punch combination. Right. It's not realistic right, right. to me. And that's why you have a, maybe one or two or three punches for and that's it. But now they can throw 35 punches because it's nothing but like a, a, a show. But I use it because I can demonstrate and emulate another boxer style. Today they don't do that. They even stand perfectly square and it's just, it's not realistic. I use the pads as a way of simulating boxing by moving and changing and doing directions. In fact, when I trained Evander Holyfield on his second fight with Riddick Bowe, which he won, uh, Evander doesn't like to box on I gotta tell you the truth. So I had to actually almost mimic really bold. You know, it's hard, especially at my height. And I had to sometimes go 12 or 13 rounds a day. And wow. we went on the pads. I lost about 18 pounds wow. myself. But I actually moved around the ring continually and he would block my jab and return the jab. And sometimes I would start a right hand, he would roll it and come back with a counter. So we actually emulated a, a boxing match. We simulated sparring. And that's totally different than this pop, pop, pop. Right. Guys like you are shrinking in the sport of boxing. You know, great trainers are really shrinking. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years or 20 years. Um, do you? 
what do you see? Why, why do you think is, that's a problem? Why do you think that we have so little great trainers in the game in the sport of boxing today? Today in boxing, you got lots of promoters, lots of advisors, uh, publicists who can keep your name all on the internet, uh, and you got these nutritionist guys who can fix up all kind of drinks and stuff, and you got the strengthening coaches who can have you lift weights and have you jump over a chair and jump back over a chair. You've got everything out here but teachers, and what we call trainers. Is, they're not trainers, and the biggest shortage in boxing today is trainers. I mean, not in, the, in teachers. Not someone just can go running with you in the morning and show you how to lift weights and can make a lot of noise on the pads, uh, to sit down and show you why you're getting hit. When your balance is like Miguel Cotto when I first said got involved with him. I said, Miguel, you fight with your weight too much over your left front. Uh, you're bending down too low, you're taking the height away. Uh, when you jab, you need to jab, move your right foot the same distance you move the left so you maintain the proper balance. Keep the weight evenly distributed. And those simple basic things no one is teaching anymore. Everyone wants to immediately jump in the ring and learn how to make a great show right. on the pads. Right, and right. We have to go back to the basics. No one wants to teach basics and most of them don't know teach how to teach basics. And it's very difficult for someone to teach something that they don't know. And most of the guys that you see out there call trainers is anyone can go and pay a ten or fifteen dollar fee and get a piece of paper. They're certified as a trainer. Right. Without having to go through a proper program, a certification right. like you have to do in right. other sports or right. uh, uh, other professions. Right. That's why I'm doing a lot of clinics right now around the world. Yeah, uh, these clinics I'm doing is basically to teach trainers because the trainers can't teach them that they don't know. And most of them don't even know the basic fundamentals. And, you taught and, one here, right? No, it's just coming up. We it's do coming it. up here? Yeah. But uh, there's a big, big shortage in, in, as we call it, trainers or teachers. And that's why I uh, oftentimes speak to some of the guys like Buddy McGarrett and we all get together and we talk. And we mention to say, all these guys, are just, if they can come in and you know, hold the pads and make a lot of noise, they call it trainer. But the great trainers are, that I remember, Ray Arcel or Charlie Goldman. Mm -hmm. And the right Blackburn and yeah. those guys yeah. back there, they, they didn't even know what a pad was. They taught, right. basically, they would teach you afterwards what you did wrong, why you got hit because, you know, you jabbed, and as you jabbed, you, your right hand went to the side of your face at the same time, and that's how you left for opening. So that's why they taught. Today, they don't do that. And they don't do it because they don't know it themselves. All right, I got a, one more question for you. We're talking about what training. You did is some good stuff here, right here. This um, is all these other is the best center of the world is about Thank training. you, thank you. It's the biggest shortage in boxing. Yeah, definitely. Nobody teaches basics. That's that's also what I've been thinking about. We, we see so many fighters in the game still, but we don't see great but fights they don't because teach. they don't, you don't see teach. great they fights don't because teach. of that, right? You don't, yeah. You know, you don't see the best. The best fighting, the best doesn't look like no. what it was 20 or 30 years ago. No, hers and Leonard and Hagger. I mean, oh my God, those Duran and all those. It's a whole different era of boxing. Now. Right. So, Today it's you know it's, it's the fights are made financially and all of this. You can have a big super fight like the one with Vladimir Klitschko and David Hagen, where one guy said, "Oh, there's a, another little neighborhood in New York that's going to get the pay per view, and I may lose ten thousand dollars because that's not in my country. I'm not fighting." I mean, it's right. it's too much business. I mean, it's a certain point where you've made millions of dollars. These fighters are mega millionaires, and you have to say, "This is the fight that the public wants. We're going to fight." Right. I mean, this, this sport has made me very rich and wealthy, right. and uh, it's not going to be, I'm trying to get every little penny, every advantage, and that's, and that's what's hurting boxing now. The big fights that the public demands and want are not being made, because right. the fighters for different reasons won't right. fight. Right. And as a result, boxing is uh, it's not as high as it has been, and it's uh, right now it's declining in general interest because the fights are made that promoters feel it's comfortable for them, maybe they control both sides of the, the equation and all of this and uh, the networks won't, but the fights that the public will, we're not making it, we're the sport is hurting.